And I got dishonest. I got one duality. I got one MS2. <laughs> Chaotic. You see, here at Dimviela Games, we don't give a crap only about Yu-Gi-Oh. We care about old games like this. So we were at Chuck E. Cheese. Hey. We found these, which was, you know, this company's desperate attempt to make this more appealing to kids. Chaotic was... I, I honestly thought it had a chance. Uh, there's a guy in the back seat. But um, I thought Chaotic had a chance. This game was fun. It was interesting. It it really wasn't good for tabletop play, which was the reason why this why this thing never really took off. Chaotic had had um had four tribes. They introduced a fifth one later on in the show. Uh, had an animated series that went with it. Started out really crappy. Moved on to be really good, in my opinion. The storyline was actually pretty good. Uh, they loved to throw hollows at you. You could use the good size sleeves, not the crappy Yugi size sleeves that are. Ba they, you could use baseball card size sleeves for this game, um, and they made these, which was a little thing. It was like eight dollars at Target, but I found them on clearance once for like three bucks. And it came with a figurine that you could put on top of your card if you wanted, and it came with a nine card booster pack, and it was like only like five, six, seven, and seven dollars, which is actually kind of a good price. So we're going to do a little pack opening. Now, just in case you don't know what Chaotic is, I'm going to include a link in the description. But um, the cool thing that, that like, it, it's kind of like, people play DN nowadays, and they think, like, oh, it's so cool, you know, you can use any card and build whatever. Chaotic was a little more difficult, because every card had a barcode on it, had, like, a little code, and you had to type that in. And once the card was scanned, quote-unquote, um, the card essentially became worthless out in aftermarket value, um, which kind of hurt and helped the game because it, it meant like eBay cards could go for as much as like $400. It was insane for a little while. Now not so much. Uh, there still are some cards that, people, that collectors look for unscanned, and every card's stats were different. So that's just a little bit of sum up of what Chaotic is. We might do more on this if you guys like this. Um, we're going to start with Lord Von Blute. And the storyline, Lord Von Blut is this, like, demon harpy man thing. Um, and he's the second in command of the Dark Army. He kind of looks kind of cool. This is kind of like a cross between Dungeon Dice Monsters and Yu-Gi-Oh, but without the Dungeon Dice. And this thing was, like, the little stand he stood on. And this was not mandatory for the game. Like, you could play this with, with or without it. But this was kind of cool, because you could, like, move your little guy around. And this was about as big as a card. So we're going to do the first pack opening. Nice. You can see either baseball card size is folded in half because it's been so long. These are like two years old sitting in a box. Alright, so there's our rare. There's gold text. Not a ultra. That was an environment. Oh, two rares. Cool. Uh, this was a, a location. And they were sideways cards and they went in a separate pile. That was an attack. Those are the bugs, the Danian tribe. An attack, overworlders, which were good guys, allegedly, and Mephedian. I'm just hoping that we pull, like, at least one nice card, but I doubt we will. These are at, these are at Chuck E. Cheese. This is Kaor. He's the, he's the big bad guy. He's like the boss, the Darth Vader of this thing, the Seto Kaiba, the Merrick Ishtar. The Leon Von Schroeder, whatever the heck you want to say. Do the pack. Why not? This might all be a bust. <laughs> oh, we got Underworld Coliseum. We got Sleep Sting. Two rares in each pack was kind of nice. Um, that's a Mugic, because they couldn't say Magic, because they wanted to avoid the whole suing thing. More Mugic. Kind of a dumb name. Another reason why the game didn't really take off was that it had some really dumb names like Mugic, and you had Mepedians, and Overworlders, and Underworlders, and like five decks that you had to play with. This all kind of had a lot to follow, but if you could follow it, it was pretty good. And, and the prize support was really good for free tournaments, because they had a lot of free tournaments just to try to get people into it. There's pretty good detail on him, though. That's Kaor. He's a big bad guy. Anyway, got a lot of garbage. So far we got these cards. We might do like a, a deck thing. 
Just because nobody gives a crap about Chaotic anymore. And I think it'd be hilarious. Because I have a whole bunch of these cards. If anybody's interested, I'll sell them. I don't care. They're sitting in a box. And I have like I have like unscanned Maxors, which Maxor is apparently one of those unscanned cards that goes for a lot of money, but I can't find a buyer for the life of me. So if this gets to anybody, let me know. I'll give it to you for like twenty bucks. And not care. God stupid plastic wrap thingies. Oh it's Maxor. This is the king of good guys. Kinda looks like a monkey slash avatar slash Navi green guy. Mixed with Piccolo. Whatever. With hair. And he's got Vegeta hair because they gotta give him Vegeta hair. Ah, oh, so much nostalgia. So little time. Video's not going too long. Alright, last pack. Let's see if we pull that ultra. Nope. Did not pull the ultra. Zoom. We got two, two of the same. But we'll explain that in a second. We got Ever Rain, which is kind of cool. It's good. Yeah, I remember that environment. It's good. Oh, Gespidan. So yeah, they got some pretty cool looking cards. Like, the art wasn't bad. The game was just kind of hard. Okay, now you see, this is what I was addressing earlier. This is Blue Gone. Now, if these are the identical, I'm going to look like a total dork. But I doubt that they are. So, here's how it goes. You had f eight stats on the card besides their energy and their music. Music was determined predeterminedly. Here's where the code is. Hope you guys don't steal it. Go ahead, I don't care. Um, there's no one does this anymore. Energy wasn't predetermined, but it had a range. Like, this guy has 35 on both, which is odd. He has water, which is predetermined. All these were predetermined. Those are the elemental specialties. But as you can see, if my camera focuses, those are different. So you had 45 courage. You had six. You had 45 courage on this one, 60, 60 power on this one, 70 wisdom on this one, 35 speed on this one, on this one back here. And this one over here only has 25 courage, has 55 power, has 65 wisdom, and has 50 speed. So the cards were all different. So it was kind of cool because you could you, you like you could you could trade a card and get a better version of it. So I mean, like it, it was kind of it was interesting. I I liked the game. Uh, it's definitely not the same for everybody. Not everybody likes that likes games like this. Um, but if you're interested in chaotic stuff, we'll uh. We'll continue to post it up. This is, like I said, Doom Valor Games, not Doom Valor Yu-Gi-Oh! So, um, anyway, we might do other pack openings for other games, like Magic, and potentially a game I've been developing, and a game my buddy developed, so. If you guys are interested, comment, rate, subscribe. We got Blue Gun. Woot. Alright. <laughs>